Hello and welcome to uh, Calc Page, the Calculus and Computer Science Archive on YouTube. And today we're going to play around with a, my YouTube recording studio on Linux for the first time ever. And also show you a little intro of how to use Sage, an online computer algebra system, based on a lot of FLOS, free Linux open source software. Um, uh, you know, free math software all bundled together to work a lot like Mathematica. Let's start by creating an account. So let me go on to the alpha site. And if you have a username and password, go right ahead. But if you don't, let's sign up. And let's make up something, I don't know, calc page. I don't think I have an account on here. Um, make up something. You can try this on your own too. We're on alpha.sagemb.org. And can I do it? Apparently, congratulations, I can do it. I don't want to remember this. Okay, so let's not. All right, so let me log in. Calc page and my trusty password here. Dun, dun, dun. We're in. Okay, so here is the notebook paradigm. Uh, each worksheet is like a sheet in a notebook or uh, maybe a folder or a bunch of sheets in a notebook. And you can uh, take notes. You can write down notes to self as comments, like in the programming language. You can write programs in Python. You can run Sage uh, queries, all kinds of fun stuff. So let's create a new worksheet right here. Just click New Worksheet. And hopefully we're off and running. Hopefully there's not a lot of people on this server right now. So this shouldn't take too long. Let's make a worksheet called, oh, I don't know. How about Sage 101? arithmetic. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so rename or hit enter. All right, so let's start very basically, very simple. Uh, this is exactly what we're doing is arithmetic. You got to realize that there are seven basic operators available to you in Sage and Python. Uh, Python is sort of like a programming language that they use as like a glue to put together all the different components of Sage. Uh, right now, I'm in a worksheet called Sage 101 Arithmetic. I'm going to be working in this cell. Just click in there if you're not highlighted. And let's just do something silly like 2 plus 7. Now, you can cl e click Evaluate, or you can do Shift Enter. And hopefully, you get 9. How many of us knew that answer? OK, so that's easy. Now, how about subtracting? Well, it's let's uh, go 2 dash 7 dash for minus. Okay, it's the uh, symbol next to a uh, mic, keyboard, the backspace, and the plus and equal sign. Okay, and shift enter that, and you should get negative 5. Wow, imagine that. All right, so that's adding and subtracting. How about multiplying? 2 star 7, star is shift 8, shift enter, or click evaluate. Shift enter also gives you a new cell to play with. If you, for some reason, lose a cell, you can find one, get a new one by hovering your mouse. So you hit this blue thing and click it, you get a new cell. Sometimes you lose the next cell and you need a new cell. So there you go. Uh, add, subtract, multiply. How about divide? Well, 2 divided by 7, sla forward slash, like the, from the question mark key. And that's very edifying. Actually, that's a good result. Because what's happening here is that uh, Sage is giving you an exact answer in algebraic notation in simplest form. And that's what you want in a computer algebra system. But I actually wanted to see what that was as a decimal. Um, I apologize for my sound level. I'm still experimenting with this. I don't know if it's too high or too low. We'll see. Um, if, by the way, you can do pretty print if you click on here, and then you click on here and reevaluate, shift enter, and you get your little pretty print. Or maybe not. There it is. Okay. Um, so I want the numerical version. Fine. So put an n parentheses seven divided two divided by seven, shift enter. And it's evaluating. It may be a little slow because a lot of people may be logged in here. But there you go. OK, good. Now, let's say uh, that's not good enough. Say I want more digits. Well, then you got to say comma digits equals, say, I don't know, 100 digits. And there you go. And it goes on and on and on and on, my friends. Okay. Now, if you didn't have pretty print on, or they call it typeset, and you run it, it'll look like this. All right, so it doesn't go off the screen, it, uh, you know, like word wraps, okay? Uh, is that not enough? Fine, let's do a thousand. And this is calculated in real time on a supercomputer. Somewhere we'll say just set up. 
And just looking at this, you can start talking about rational numbers, repeating decimals, or look how nicely repeating it looks like, see? All right, so it's 28571, wait, 285714, 285714, right? Here it looks like it's 142857, but whatever. And if that's not good enough, how about 10,000 digits, okay? There you go. Alrighty. Now, Sage gets a little uh, lazy if you go too far with this. Um, it gives you the answer in a text file that you can download, or you can click on it and view it. It gives you the first few, I don't know, 100 lines, and then it skips to the last, like, 100 lines of output. But if you want to see the whole thing, you can just go and um, click right here, and there it is in full glory. And let me sh just slide that over, and of course you get the same result, a nice big repeating decimal. And there it is. Alrighty, very good. Okay, so let's get out of that. Well, that's sort of silly, so I'm going to go back to 100. That's enough. Ta da! Okay. So that's dividing. So adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. Now, I said that there were seven operators. That's four. What are the other uh, three? Well, there's different kinds of dividing. How about two slash slash seven and two, um, let's see. Shift, where is it? Shift 5, 2% 7. Now, this is integer division. How many times does 7 go into 2? Zero times. And what's the remainder? Two times. Okay? So that two ti 0 times 7 plus 2 is 2. That's the uh, remainder theorem from arithmetic. Okay, I mean, what if I did 12? Well, 12 divided by 7 goes at most once, right? With the remainder of, well, what? 5? There you go. Okay, so that's dividing. There's three flavors of dividing. There's adding, subtracting, multiplying, three flavors of dividing. Well, that's six operators. What's the third one? Well, exponentiation. How about two to the seventh? Okay, that's nice. How about 22 to the 77th? Hmm. How about 202 to the 777? And you get the idea. All righty. Um, let's go crazy. How about 22,222 to the 77,777? And calculating in real time, there is one number. This isn't even a decimal. This is one integer. It's humongous. Oh, it's doing that skip thing. So the full text actually isn't there. It's here. And let's see, there it is. This is all one number, one integer. 22,277 to the 77,777 time, a power, or exponent, I should say. Wow, that's crazy. Well, how many digits is that? Is there a way to find out? Well, yeah, because there's a lot more stuff going on in Sage. Um, what I could do is I could convert this to a string. And you get the same thing. But I can take the length of a string. I think this is Python code now. And so how many digits are there in that number? Well, it's 338,080 digits, exactly. Wow, isn't that something? By the way, you can do that with logs, too. Um, let's see. What if I said, what's the log of 10? You would say 1, wouldn't you? Log base 10 of 10 is 1, right? Well, you'd be wrong, wouldn't you? Mm. Oh, I need a numerical version, sorry. That's the exact answer. And we get the numerical, you expect one, right? No, because here log is log base e, not log base 10. So if you want to convert it to log base e divided by log of the base you want, converting it from log base e to log base 10. L-O-G in Sage is L-N, natural log. And so that's one, okay? Now, if I took the, the log of 10 in base 10 and I get one, that's telling me how many zeros I got here or how many places after the first. Like if I said 123, it says two-ish. Hmm. What if I take the integer part of that? Take the integer part of that 
and add one. Now I get how many digits there are, don't I? In 123? How about in 12,345? It should be six. How about in 912,345? There should be six. Hmm. There you go. Okay, so let's do this calculation. Let's see if we get the same answer. Just for fun. We do. There you go. All right, so two ways of figuring out how long and how big a number is, how many digits it has in front of the decimal point. All righty. So let's play around a little bit. Well, you ever hear of Mersenne prime numbers? This is a Mersenne prime, 2 to the 2 minus 1. Uh, Mersenne uh, was a monk in France hundreds of years ago who was trying to find large prime numbers. And he figures, well, powers of 2 are even. And powers of 2 grow very fast, very quickly, as you increase the exponent. Okay, because it's an exponential function. Now, if you take that power of 2, which is an even number, you subtract 1 from it, you get an odd. So, stands to reason, if you take a power of 2, like 2 to the 3rd, you get an even number. Minus 1, you get an odd. But he found that he was getting a lot of, not just odd numbers, but prime odd numbers. Remember, not all, num not all primes are odd, right? The first one, number the 2, is not. And not all odd numbers are prime either. I mean, look at like 11 or 15. So does this continue? Let's see, 2 to the 4 minus 1. No, that didn't work. Then Racine said, well, wait, what if I take an, a prime exponent? OK, 2 is prime. 3 is prime. How about 5? Yeah, that's prime. Hmm. What's the next prime after 5? Not 6. 7. How about 2 to the 7 minus 1? I think that's prime. You know, we should automate this. Let's write this a, a little bit of a program. I'm going to write a for loop to calculate this kind of thing over and over and over again, just changing the exponent. All right? So let's write a program that does that for me and then tests for primality. So here's a loop uh, in Sage notation. Sorry, actually Python notation. For um, i in range 2 to, I don't know, 100. So these will be my exponents. Colon, don't forget the colon, that's syntactic. Enter. Don't get rid of the indenting, that's syntactic too. Everything that's indented here is being controlled by the for loop. The loop will iterate i over the, ind uh, the integers 2 to 100. Okay, actually 2 to 99, I think it goes. Um, all right, so let's calculate m. Um, well, wait, before I do that, let me just print uh, 2 to the i minus 1. Enter. Now, let me backspace here. And, um, well, actually, I don't think I have that. All right, this, can we evaluate this? Let's evaluate. Here we go. Did a shift enter, and it's calculating. It plugged in the 1. 2 to the 1 is, uh, sorry, the 2. 2 to the 2 is 4 minus 1 is 3. Then 2 to the 3 is 8 minus 1 is 7. Then 2 to the 4 is 16 minus 1 is 15. And 2 to the 5 is 32 minus 1 is 31. All right, so some of these are prime and some of these are not. So, right, 15 doesn't work. 255 is a multiple of 5. That's no good. 4095 is no good. So how do we strip off the non-primes? I just want to print out the ones that are prime. All right, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to calculate... Let m equal that, 2 to the i minus 1. And then only if m is prime, I'm going to print it. So if m dot is prime, and I think this must be a sage function, colon, then print it. Then print m. I don't have to calculate it again. I stored it as m. So I calculated it, stored it as m, tested m, and if it tests out, if m that is prime is true, it'll print the m. All right, so let's see if I get a different output. Before, I got 3, 7, 15, 31, 63, right? Now it's 3, 7, 31. That, that, there you go. There's the first 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 Mersenne primes. So out of, let's see, 2 to 99, 1 to 100 is, is 100 integers, right? So 2 to 100 is 99, but actually this stops at 
plugging in 99. So I think this is 98. So F 98 calculations, only 100. I'm uh, sorry, only uh, 10 out of those, almost 100, are actually prime and of the form Mersenne. So Mersenne, prim Mersenne numbers that are prime. What if I went to 1,000? It's calculating, it's calculating. Look, not that many. Hmm. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And notice this one's really long. That's wrapping 13. So out of almost 1,000 exponents, I only got 13 prime numbers uh, that are also Mersenne numbers. Interesting. All right, well, that's just a brief introduction to arithmetic in SAGE and a brief introduction to maybe a little bit of programming in Python. And that'll do for today. I hope that helps you get started using SAGE. All right, bye-bye.